welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of the Hyperconscious Podcast. Today, we have a very special guest. He is a personal development trainer. I've never heard it put like that before. He's an entrepreneur, a consultant. He's the CEO and the founder of the Internship Institute, and he's the author of Zisms Insights to Live By, and he is also a giant difference maker. We are sitting down with Matt Zinman. What is happening, my man? Hey, it is great to be here. I'm feeling hyper-conscious already. Just that intro <laughs> alone, I'm like I'm getting, I'm jacked up. Well, you were talking Let's about Alan's- Bring on those questions. You were talking about Alan's energy in the preamble, and I had to show you that I can, I can bring the energy- uh, as well. So I know, no doubt. And so what I would like to do before we get into the man that you are today and doing all the things that you're doing, I'd like to kind of take a, a look into your past and figure okay. out, okay, this is Matt today, but where did Matt come from? So can you take us through your story a little bit? Yeah, for certain. Uh, well, I'm here in Philadelphia. I may as well be anywhere during this particular <laughs> time. Uh, but I grew up around here and uh, went to Temple University. Uh, one of the common threads for me throughout my life is I'm an ice hockey player. So um, I was competing at a, at a fairly high level. I was on Team USA um, in my mid-teens. I mean, I didn't go semi-pro or anything, so I, I don't want to get too high. I was probably the last guy on the team. All right, so don't take that as a, <laughs> as a brag. Uh, and, um, so the, you know, the hockey and the friendships, that was always a big part for me. I'm still playing. Uh, so, you know, it's just been a source of, uh, a, a source of great joy through my life. Um, I went into the field of marketing communication, journalism degree, public relations. I worked in agencies in and around the city and then started my own in 2002. I went virtual. This is the time when bricks and mortar versus virtual, like bricks, right? Us versus them time as far as now. Now the pendulum has swung completely the, <laughs> the other way um, unexpectedly. Uh, so that's when I also was married at the time. And that's when I also uh, decided to go in on, on my own. I, my son um, uh, was two. So while I was starting my business, you know, this is obviously a major intersection. I needed that, that freedom, um, you know, as a single dad, you know, half the time doing, you know, the diapers and bottles thing. Um, and that's a, that's a life uh, changing experience there. And I wouldn't change it, you know, trade it for the world. Uh, and then I ran that company for about three years. And then in 05, I started going into the internship space. And in part because I was looking for something else, obviously entrepreneur, I've been out 15 years in my career, uh, but I saw the need. I saw that it aligned well with my, my skills, my, my passion and experience. I'd always run internship programs. I'm probably over 300 interns at this point myself. That's just years adding up. And, uh, I started a nonprofit in 2007 uh, and have run programs mainly for employers, setting, setting up uh, the programs, um, you know, on the opportunity side, making sure that they don't suck, basically, is <laughs> my job is making sure internships don't suck. I don't really get to say that too often, but I'll, I'll lay we it We like out. it. We appreciate it. I'll lay it out right here. <laughs> um, and then that, uh, you know, that more recently led to me uh, to, uh, to write the book. What? How's that? Is that right? Top line? That's good. That's good. Okay. Perfect. There's good. plenty to dig into. So right. you're, you seem very enlightened. You seem very conscious. You seem very self-aware. That doesn't usually happen by accident. Usually something causes us to, to kind of search. So what was the catalyst in your life that made you decide it's time for me to start embarking on the process of self-discovery? Wow. That's a great question. Um, I, I definitely started getting into uh, personal development in my, in my early 20s. Um, some of it was, uh, you know, curiosity. I, you know, I've always had that, that drive, you know, for self-improvement. I'm a rookie in so many categories. I can't begin to tell you, you know, up until this day. And that was certainly all the more the truth then. Uh, another thing that was part of that uh, intersection was that I, and I reveal this in, in the book too, but I had to contend with depression. Mm -hmm. um, you know, since my teens. So part of that self-discovery was really kind of fighting back uh, where, where that was concerned and, and giving myself the, the, the tools, the coping skills uh, that I, I certainly now employ to this day uh, to take the best care of myself. So I feel my best. And, uh, but, but, you know, that's anybody who has to go through that and, and you know, even on an ongoing basis, you know, that, that definitely defines, you know, some of your life experience that you have to just uh, battle through. 
Yeah. Yeah. This process, a lot of it started for me when I was suicidal. That's when I really dug into this. Alan and I were, that's when this all started for, for me. Alan was already, already doing it. All right, Alan, I'll let you ask. Yeah, real quick. I just want to ask you, is your mic selected? Oh, who knows, man? Cause I think it might be going through. I just realized your audio might be going through the wrong. No, my, my mic is selected. Oh no. He's, he's talking no, about me. Yeah. I'm Jeff and Kev. Okay. Go. There you go. Now. So Kev. It's, it should do it when I sign. No, no, it's, oh, it's Kevin's mic. Yeah, Kevin's, Kevin's mic, yeah. Okay. I was one take Matt until just now. Oh, you guys <laughs> blew it. <laughs> oh, right. we're, we're going to still go. We're going to oh, go. Right oh, okay. Yeah, oh, we're no, good. We're, oh, all right. We're, we're and we're back. And, and we're, we're back. back. <laughs> exactly. So I have several things written down here, Matt, that I wanted to go into. The first thing, though, you just mentioned depression. Mm-hmm. I think that awareness is the first step to improving anything. So, so can you go into what you've learned about depression and how you even identified that you were depressed and then kind of what you did? Cause I've had boats of it, bouts of it rather, uh, right. but not ever anything uh, long-term. It was just acute. And uh, I would love your take on that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, I really like getting practical with this topic. It, it, that's, that's what matters most here. And uh, I've, I've had to, you know, I've had intersections with depression in different ways in my life. I didn't exactly inherit the best gene pool for one. So my mom, uh, was, uh, was depressed and she contended with that. My, my dad was bipolar. Um, you know, my brother, right. So on and on. So it's not just about me. It's about those life experiences and being a caretaker. Uh, and as far as the practical side of it, uh, you know, I look at depression on, on that, on that, like a mood scale, almost like a thermometer. Uh, and this is something I do cover. I do take this head on uh, in, in some of what I wrote. But you're looking at, let's just say you've got that perfect balance, right? Whatever that is, it doesn't last too long. But you've got that, that range of normal, which is also, you know, subject to defining of, you know, normal, sad, you know, dreary day up until, you, oh my God, it's spring. You know, whatever that range is. And then you've got the falling through and slipping in the quicksand feeling. And that's, that's really one of the best ways I can describe it. And the deeper you go, the higher the quicksand is. And then you get to the point where you can't get out. And, uh, and, and, and of course, you can look at things from the side of having the, uh, the rose-colored lenses, you know, uh, on the farthest point of optimism. And then you've got the, the grayest. Uh, and you can see the same exact set of circumstances in completely opposite ways. Right. And the thing for me with depression, knowing that I was depressed, knowing that's not something, because it is like it's a, I'm a slow mover. I, you know, I can't just snap out of it on that thermometer. You're literally kind of you know, going up and down on it. Um, I always know that things will be better. I always, even though I don't feel it, even though it doesn't, seen that way as bad as circumstances may may be even i know that i'm going to get through it and i know that things will be better even if i don't feel it even if i don't have the answers that's kind of been my life preserver personally and then even to this day i kind of have this rule that like three days you know i know i'm going to have a, a down day or i'm going to get punched in the gut or something that happens in life if i get to a third day it's like I'm my own parent. Like you will do this and you have no choice. So that's working out. That's creating structure. That's um, not laying around. That's reaching out to people who lift me up and uh, not isolating. And you know, that prevents me from, uh, from sinking deeper. Where did you really- get that belief? Because for a lot of people, I think one of the biggest pains of depression is number one, I think it's going to be like this forever. And number two, it just comes in and stays and I don't know how to get get rid of it so did you do something to build that or is that just from experience you think well I, you know i can only speak for myself you know on one hand in talking about it i can say well i'm not a doctor and at the same time i don't know how many doctors have actually suffered from depression either so who's you know who's you know so part of it is is the is absolutely the personal experience i mean like i said it's i grew up with it um you know like with my mom at, at certain times you know she she was in bed and it, it was well uh, mom, let's just go over and, you know, go do this. I can't. What do you mean you can't? You know, your feet work, but I, I just didn't understand. Like, that's how, you know, deep she was at times. So, I don't know. That's a hard question to answer, Alan. I, I, I think it's just, it's just experience. I mean, it's pain and suffering, really, right? There's no other way but through. And so, you just have to keep, you have to keep pushing, knowing that, uh, you know, brighter days are ahead. So, one of the things that I wanted to ask you is you have something called true perception 
Kevin and I were on a mastermind yesterday where we were talking a lot about something we call the drive to five, which is, you know, this sort of zero scale is all self doubt. The 10 is, you know, super confident in some cases, arrogant. And how do you, how do you find, how do you level set and find that happy medium? And like you said, just there, it's like, if you're in a really, really terrible depressed state, you're going to see the same circumstance with those gray colored glasses versus the super optimistic, colorful ones. And so Kevin and I do a really good job. I think of balancing each other out in this arena. I'm overly optimistic. And and at times he can sometimes be a little bit uh, overly realistic or whatever you want to frame that as. Now that said, I was also watching a Ted talk last night about perception and how our feelings are signals that are triggered by the environment. So you have something called true perception. How do we know that what we're perceiving is the truth? Right. So uh, one, one thing I, I, I just want to add real fast in, in answering that question and tra- if we're just kind of sliding off of mental health to a degree is there's a silver lining with COVID in telehealth where people who may have had that barrier of having to make an appointment and go you know, to some office now, if they want to get checked out and you know, it's serious stuff right now, there's a lot of people who are hurting. It's going to get worse in a lot of ways and they really need to reach out and, and make sure that uh, you know, people are depending on them no matter how bad they feel. I lost my brother to it, you know, as well. So um, perception is certainly part of that. I look at this as like filters. So mood health is certainly one, right? We just covered that. That's a real, you know, that, that, that's an extreme. And then, uh, you know, at the front end of that, we're going to talk, uh, I know we mentioned in the pre-show about earned confidence. That's another, we'll get to that. And then you've got perception itself. And so we, Con, you know, I think it's pretty obvious, right? We have a constant flow of information. There's all these moving parts. We might be not in the present. We could be worrying. We could be, you know, in any state of mind uh, at any given time. And whatever it is that we're experiencing, we assume is the truth. Right. But it's just an interpretation. And so the, the real check-in about perception is, number one, you got to give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Um, you know, why be anything less than kind to yourself, first off and, and foremost, just at the foundation of that. But people are really are quick to beat themselves up, um, you know, making an assumption uh, of something that they, they think someone else or they perceive someone else is thinking of them a way that they're not, right? And then you're starting to get in, in, into, uh, into just these phantom, you know, feelings and, and negativity that you do to yourself. You have to really think you know, fight back. And then the same thing goes for the opposite, right? So you can be in a situation, let's say in a borderline, maybe heading for a confrontation. And again, both people are going to say, well, I'm right. I'm right. It doesn't mean either one of them are wrong. However, it is might, might've interpreted whatever circumstance that is. And that's when you make the decision, do I yield and not have, you know, a week's worth of angry emails and put myself through, or, uh, you know, do I you know, want to create a fire here. But the point is, is you also have to give everyone else the benefit of the doubt too. You know, maybe you didn't quite catch it right. You know, just be, be open to the fact that there's, there is really, I don't know, there is a, such a thing as true perception because we're never going to get every single detail. Uh, one thing else I'll say here is, uh, you know, it's different tools that, that we um, apply. And at the end of that, that chapter is this perception snapshot. And it's pretty, it's pretty easy. You don't have to see it to, you know, for me to explain. So if you look in a left column and all these different moving parts, if you could just isolate them and say, well, are my basic life needs met? Part one. Am I healthy? Is my family healthy? You know, my kids. And then go down the line. You know, it could be relationships and all the way down to work-life balance. Whatever that is for you, those, those single data points that you categorize. And then just go to the right and take the snapshot, positive or negative. How am I feeling right now, right? Back to that, I can see things differently, you know, at one time versus another. And start rooting yourself around gratitude. Because if you can go into the, I've got my basic life needs met and I'm healthy, and everyone I love is healthy, wow. I mean, everything else is gravy right there. So just stop, you know, like, screw that fight I'm having. You know, whatever that is, everything else is completely secondary to those two things. And so you can go down that column, of course, and that's an individual experience, how much someone wants to um, be intentional, um, as Kevin might say, uh, in, uh, in, in, in experiencing gratitude. And then hardly anyone's not going to have everything not everything, but certain things over on the right. 
But then you isolate them and you say the same thing we talked about with depression. Is this temporary? How bad is this really? Right? And then I'm going to make it through this just like I did everything else. So if you can just really kind of step back from it almost outside of yourself and to your question, Alan, um, seek that objectivity as what you might call true perception, as if looking back at yourself in a situation outside of it and yourself, that's probably as close as you're going to be able to get between the snapshot and that. But then ultimately, it's about just treating yourself right and, and giving yourself and others the benefit of the doubt. How important is, so anytime I hear perception, and this is like a new thought for me, self-discovery, awareness, and consciousness has to play into that because from, and Alan was talking about the drive to five, people who are lower on confidence, and again, this is a bit of a blanket statement, but people who are lower on confidence are usually running those scenarios of this person is definitely thinking badly about me or I'm not doing a good job, right? So what is the process of self-discovery? Because I think some people think it's read a book and then um, I'm good now, but it's, it's always mm-hmm. this constant evolution, isn't it? Well, yes, to the, to the, to the last point, of it, absolutely. I mean, I'm a work in progress. You guys are. I mean, I just joined Hyperconscious Nation, by the way. So, oh, appreciate thank you. you. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad to have you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very Hi. much. So I'm still working at it, right? Just the same. Um, I, I think your question, Kevin, goes back to you know, it really, I mean, it's, it's earned confidence. Okay. So let me just go back to that. We talked about it pre-show and, and, and it really is at the foundation of a lot of what we're talking about. It's kind of that third filter. So you've got mood, health, and perception, but at the front end, earned confidence. And what we're talking about here is wherever we are in our life, young, or otherwise, we've all been through whatever we've been through. We've been through the ringer. We can define the ringer, however we define that, but we're still standing. And if you've been able to get through everything that you've already gotten through up until now, why worry and be anxious and stress out and go neg um, or make assumptions when you know that you're perfectly capable because you've proven that to yourself, that you're going to handle everything that comes your way. So just deal with the real. And uh, this really, if, if you could just really grab it's a logic formula, really, right? It's undeniable, right? We're all still standing. I think that you can't argue that. So, and we've already, we've already made it through everything, right? I don't think you can argue that either. So the point is, is you have to keep coming back to that, especially on the worrying side, because worrying is a habit. You know, um, the babies aren't born worriers. And so to the point made about these things running through our head in these scenarios, Sometimes those happen subconsciously. You might not even, you could be beating, this is depression too, right? You could be beating yourself up and then 30 minutes later realize like, I've been in my head, I I feel like crap because I've been saying all these things to myself, I didn't even realize it. So then you gotta go fight yourself on the other side of that already happening. And if you can't even catch worry in the moment, like, oh, I really don't need to worry about that. It hasn't happened yet. I can't be certain it's gonna happen. I've got enough going on right now. Let me just kind of, right, stay here. But the way that you get out of that is you have to go on the other side of whatever it is you worried about and do the 2020 when it never happens and be like, wait, what did I do to myself about in worrying about this? And then it never happened. And I was, I I completely put myself through all this neg. And then not only that, let's say this is you, Kevin, in this moment, and you told Alan about it. And then you guys are, you know, going in, you know, in that, in that, neg zone for no reason and so you have to also look at that that personal responsibility that we all have around uh our energy and and the transfer of how we affect each other and so the uh you know and and within ourselves right about about beating ourselves up just the same so um now i'll stop there (laughs) can you can you take us through if you're willing to be vulnerable with us What's a negative thing that you say to yourself frequently that, that is a habit and you're trying to take control and be intentional about, about your thought patterns? I thought I was already being vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> What's left? No, no. You, it's like when someone going, say, I'm going to be peel, honest. It's yeah, like, yeah. Well, peel wait, the that, means you weren't, that means you weren't being honest before? Um, <laughs> no, no. I'm nothing but honest. No. I'm, Honestly, I don't beat myself up. Did you used to? Oh, yeah. 
So what was Horrible. one of the I mean, things de- that depression? Yeah. I mean, sure. So when you were depressed, it, to me, it comes down to what are you focusing on? Right. So you can focus more on the past, the present or the future. You can focus on, you know, whether or not you're doing things right or quote unquote wrong based on your own standard. You can focus on, you know, what you do have mm-hmm. gratitude versus what is missing. Right. And so each one of those things we focus on has a different feeling that sure. comes to us. Right. And so for you, what was one of the common themes of thought patterns that, because I think as kids, we get in these thought patterns and they become highways to this negative feeling. And until we get more intentional about that, I mean, that's where the hyperconscious podcast was born. It's like, when you change the way you think, you change the way you act, you change the way you live. Like right. that's, that's what this is. So for you, how did you, what was one that really controlled you? And then what, how, what did you do to take back control? Hmm. That's a good, you know, I, I do forget uh, to a degree. I mean, I'm in my early fifties now and I definitely was insecure at, at, at those early uh, ages and how to, how to overcome it. And uh, you, you do, you kind of forget what that's, what that's like. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to speak more to the history of it uh, a little bit. Number one, um, and I got to take this out of the realm of the depression too, because that's, you know, that's skewed. Right. If I'm going to give you an objective answer, I, I have to look at this and, and take that out of the equation. So um, I'm going going back a few years. I'm stalling right now while I come up with the answer. Um, <laughs> that uh, I, I think that I think that I just set an intention around I'm going to get knocked down, and I'm I have you know it's, it's like a hockey thing. <laughs> I'm going to get knocked down, and I'm I'm going to get back up one more time than I'm knocked down and it's, it's going to happen. And it's just kind of a rule you set for yourself. This is all intentional, right? You, you asked about the past. Well, the past doesn't do you any good except for the great memories for the most part. Um, keeping a scorecard in a relationship. Don't do that. It's a relationship killer, right? But don't so you like that, that's from ex- the past. Yeah, you can learn from the past. I mean, look, I went through a divorce. I had numerous, you know, several serious relationships before meeting my, my wife, Erica. Um, we're together three years now. Um, you're going to learn from every relationship to make the next one better for whatever those mistakes were. And, you know, you're going to learn a lot about yourself. I mean, no substitute for experience, right? We're going back to some of the internship stuff. It's, it's, tr- it's entirely transferable. So there, there, in a lot of cases, there's just no other way but through in in terms of you know continuing to take the next step and then one after the other but a lot of it has to come down to that intention if if you're it's a lot about energy management too i think um the leaving the past behind not getting caught up in in worry staying present rooting yourself in gratitude uh i think was a big one for me at an early age that you know is very much at the heart of personal development and I, I think that that's a great grounding principle. I, I, you know, we all, and there's a science behind it, right? So we all know that staying in the present and being intentional about gratitude is where some of the greatest joy in life happens, you know, so you're not blinking and, you know, have five years go by. So you're really, that's, you know, that's where I'm sure you guys talk about all the time. All the time. Right. All the time. So I love to dig in. Alan and I both kind of, uh, we track our relationships. So I'm very curious to see from your experience, what happens when you do, like, what are the, are there any benefits from your experience? And I guess just to make sure that we're talking about the same thing at the Mm -hmm. end of the week, we do a check-in. How am I meeting your needs? That sort of thing. My girlfriend and I are actually doing it every day now. So from your perspective, is that what you're saying when it comes to, to kind of measuring it? Or are you saying looking in the past and then comparing? First of all, when you started that question, I was wondering how you're going to come at me. That could have gone any different direction. <laughs> um, I, I, I think specific to relationships, um, uh, I, I've definitely, you know, learned, I'm just, I'm trying to frame out, you know, the question that, the question that you're asking, I guess, let me kind of take a different tact on this. Sure, sure. Okay. So if, if I take it cumulatively, from all my past relationships, and I now go into my current relationship, which is the easiest thing for me to refer to as, as opposed to trying to draw upon past experience. Um, 
Erica and I always know who the current is. We, we always know who's got the ball with everything. It's kind of the domestic version of going with the flow. And it's, it's kind of a relief, you know, who, who, who does what? And, and then what's the in-between and how do you solve it? And you will erase all those, you know, you're, you're in prevention mode here just the same, not only just harmony mode, but doing it, those kinds of things in that way, you're preventing anything from coming up. Well, you don't have to fight over the finances or, you know, that's your ball. You know, just clue me in. You know, I've got, I've got to say, don't get me wrong, whichever that person is in the relationship. But I think you see where I'm going. And then you have to look for in complimenting one another. Well, where do I really have to step in? So with Erica, like she, she just doesn't, it's just not her thing. She doesn't have the patience to do calls to service providers. Like call the bank, call the insurance company, you know, that's like zero to madness for her in, in like five seconds flat. So I know that's my department. So I step in and I cover for her in those kinds of things. And that's what, that's just the relationship partnership. I, I don't know if I'm really answering your question as well as you want me to. Well, I, I was just, yeah, no, I, it is because I want to know what you do in your relationships. Yeah. That's the practical, absolutely the practical side. I mean, it sounds very, um, I, I don't know, very matter of fact, but you know, that part of the relationship is, it really is. And you know, the things that she does, it just, and, and likewise, you know, it's a big relief to each one of us. And, and um, you know, it's the too many cooks in the kitchen and all those different kinds of metaphors. And then where there are gaps, you know, how do you close them? And, and that works. Can you give us an example? So for our listeners, many of them are in relationships and or want their dream relationship and are currently seeking that. Uh, I often talk about whether it's a business partnership or a friendship or an intimate relationship, it needs to be a win-win. It needs to be, you know, similar goals and mission, similar core values, but complementary strengths and weaknesses. So whether it's Kevin and me or Emilia and I, or him and Taryn, you know, working in perfect harmony toward a common goal with congruent core values is everything, but we do right. have different strengths and weaknesses. So for Kevin, he's more focused on short-term tactics and profitability. I'm more focused on long-term vision and strategy. And that works really, really well, but it took us years oh, to yeah. get to the point where we sure. realized that. So what, what I find happens in intimate relationships, and I feel like this is very unfortunate, is you fall in love and it takes failing forward and a lot of times growing pains, for lack of better phrasing, to get to the point where you know, like, she's zero to madness with service providers. Let me take that ball. Right. You know, Emilia and I were shopping, not for the first time, but we've been together for six, seven months now, and we were shopping on our way to the lake house. Um, her parents lake house this past weekend and we were in a time crunch and she knows that supermarket way better than me and shopping's not exactly my forte right so sure. what i should have done is just give her the ball like you were you know recommended right. and we talked about that in our check-in and we're good but there was a little bit of friction so for someone early in a relationship who right. doesn't know their partner well enough to know their strengths and weaknesses yet how would they how do they navigate that without creating the pain or the traumas that might disconnect them sure um I like that question. Um, you know, I don't want to come off as the expert here because I don't know who is on this, on this <laughs> front. Um, I've definitely done my share of dating. I was a single dad for a very long time. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I was, I, I mean, I had those relationships, but there was certainly plenty of dating along the way. I, I find that people, number one, on the front end of your question, get caught up in the checklist scenario and that they have to, you know, really kind of set a standard for themselves and it's this or that. And, you know, these are the deal breakers and everything. And, and for me, uh, it, it's really, it's really only one thing that matters. There's only one checkbox and that is how you um, either feed each other or drain each other. And, you know, again, it's kind of going back to that energy thing, you know, do you in, inspire the other person and support the other person to be their best self? Do I feel like my best self when I'm with this person? Um, I've had relationships where, um, you know, some insecurities came into play and some jealousies came into play for no reasons. And then all these assumptions occurred. And then I'm having these phantom arguments over nothing that ever happened. Like that's drives me insane. So no, that was not a good relationship. Um, and, and those are the kinds of things that some of what you're asking about, it, it, again, comes back to a personal responsibility to, an individual who might have some of those dynamics that they have to work on that they're bringing into the relationship. I think it's, I think it's more a lot about that stuff before you get into the, 
um, you know, the more matter of fact is, is, is dealing with the, um, you know, we all have our dysfunctions, you know, for whatever reason and growing up and that's just part of life and knowing what it is that we have to work on ourselves. And also that comes back to giving yourself and your, you know, your partner, the benefit of the doubt um, in those different situations. But again, for me, I don't think people should be, I mean, look, there's an attraction factor. Okay. Let's go there. But I don't think people need to be <clears throat> too caught up in, um, other than that, I mean, I like dating single moms, like that was important to me. Okay. Cause I, it was just a different mode. Um, but don't get so over analytical. Don't try and look for perfection and don't expect perfection along the way. I mean, Erica and I were in love at first sight, but that's where, you know, we've been, you know, she's been married before we've been around the block and we learn a lot, but it doesn't mean that, you know, relationships are still going to just be, uh, as much as we're in great, a great flow together. It's still going to be work no matter what. I mean, we've never had a fight. I can say that, which I'm, I, I'm really glad to say. I always tell people that as long as it's relation, your relationship is always going to be work as long as it's the work that you want to do. And that's, it's always some form of work, whether it's getting better or making sure I don't get insecure. And I think it's, it goes hand in hand with becoming more aware and self-discovery like that. A relationship is, the, the greatest mirror you will ever see in your entire life, as long right. as you're willing to admit it. Cause you can always go like, you know what? She was crazy, Matt. Like that girl was crazy. That's, <laughs> that's, it's all her fault. And a lot of people do that, but I think you're really right. selling yourself short when you do that. I, I think it has less to be, it has less to do with, look, we all have our baggage. We all have our, our challenges and there's no such thing as a perfect jive. I mean, I mean, you can love at first sight, but you know, the real work um, you know, there's, there's, there's going to be things in relationships that you just have to figure out along the way when you encounter those frictions to try and, and mitigate them. I know it's a, again, a very practical word here, but like not let things get out of control and then make a decision together. Like, this is not my thing. This is not my thing or recognize. I think it's more like, it's like the ego is really where we are right now. Right. It's, it's just kind of accepting, you know what I, I've got you know, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. And, and just kind of, uh, and let that be a, a guiding factor, but man, don't have a scorecard. Don't make assumptions. Don't, you know, deal with the real stick with your own confidence part of it. And, uh, and life's too short not to, not to have the love and enjoy that. That's what it's about. So you have something on the one sheet that we were sent which I appreciate, by the way, because that was really powerful. You have a book called Z-isms. Right. And this is one of your Z-isms, I believe. And I wrote it down earlier, but it's basically making coincidences matter. Now, you've mentioned coincidence several times in this interview already. How do we make coincidences matter? And also, you put some numbers in there, 11-11. Right. I'm very curious as to what that represents, because I'm a numbers guy. Sure. Thanks. Um, there's a few questions in there, so I'll, I'll kind of I'll kind of take them in, uh, in order. So the book is a personal development book. It's got nothing to do with my, uh, my nonprofit work. Um, it is based on different concepts and things. I've been wanting to write it for a very long time. And it just got to the point, like, what would I regret not doing? And mm. it was, I got to do this. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I put my head down this past year and, you know, it just came out. And so what we're talking about here is at the front end, it's uh, self-discovery and mindset. And then you get more into relationships and those personal interactions, some of what we're talking about. And then where you are, you're, you're looking at like mindfulness, some of the, you know, the law of attraction type things, those energy exchanges, swimming with the current. Um, so it then goes into making coincidences matter. And um, I did have a very major coincidence. We, I don't think we can go on this tangent here uh, for the show purposes, but in some cases, I think coincidences happen on a spectrum. Uh, it, it could be something very simple, like uh, I was just thinking of somebody and, you know, boom, right? So I've talked to this person a long time, the phone rings. I'm in another city and I run into somebody, coincidence. Um, you hear the thing three times, you know, I think a lot of people have heard of that. Oh, it's third time rapid succession. I really should now start paying attention to that. What's that about? And, and then you start getting into the ones that are, um, more on the side of odds to find. And, and, and I, I think that the more you are in alignment, and this is, again, coincidences are to some degree factual when, when you're, you're at the farther end of the spectrum, but they're also experiential and, and they all require follow through. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and you have to look at them as opportunities, you know, um, 
one of the things that I have in that chapter is, uh, is making, uh, is, is having a coincidence journal and having some fun with that. Uh, and, and I, I do look at coincidences as opportunities. And again, I think again, that the more you're in gratitude, the more you're in alignment, the more you're hyper-conscious, um, the more you're going to start experiencing these things. And I think you have to experiment with that. Uh, the 1111 is chapter 11. I, I do have a thing for um, catching it. It's just part of that synchronicity, which I think is, an a it's just that one of those aspects, it's one of those triggers of being in the flow. Um, it, it, it's that brush with coincidence, but it's not really, right? It's not really quite, but it's kind of a, it's kind of those one of those things that I do where uh, in my day, it, it forces me just to stop what I'm doing if I catch it and just take a moment and mm. it's okay just to, you know, like a minute seems like a long time when you really pay attention to it. And that's just, that's okay. Um, I do, do this too, by the right? way. Yeah, 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 do that. Or you have to, you have to build these triggers in because grat you know, practicing gratitude is practicing gratitude. It's not going to happen if you don't, you know, set alerts on your phone and things like that. And then we get into um, amplifying gratitude. And we talk about the law of attraction, me, myself, and I in the book when I say <laughs> in this case. Um, and, you know, I look at the law, I mean, a law of attraction is the law of attraction. I'm not there to you know, invent it. I'm just there to try and interpret and explain as, it, as it's already out there. And from my vantage point, it it's really comes down to what we expect tends to happen. That's, that's really where it all the funnel kind of leads to. And to me, that also connects back to, you know, we're talking about energy here. We're talking about thought. Um, and I know you guys have talked about this stuff on your show quite a bit as well. But if you go back to worry and you think of, worry being about setting an expectation of things you do not want to happen. If we're talking about it in the context of the law of attraction, worrying actually could cause the very things you do not want to happen. Mm -hmm. If in fact, right. what you expect tends to happen. So don't worry. That's another reason not to worry because right. That's what law of attraction states, right? But you know, I always worry about money, so you don't have any. Right. Um, so that, that's part of it. And then we get into the entrepreneurial side of the law of attraction because it's very transactional um you know a book doesn't write itself a business doesn't start itself you know you're not going to become profitable without you know the things that are effortful and then how do you take the principles of alignment and law of attraction and apply it into things that are that way and that's kind of later in the book but um I'll just wrap up at this part by just saying that, that I want it to be practical. So there's this life enrichment action plan that provides a framework around personal development that recaps these different things that we're talking about in the book as you come to the end. And, and uh, that's encapsulated in um, winning the battle within. Hmm. Matt, what, from your perspective, what is intuition? Cause we're going, we're talking a, a lot about the law of attraction and energy and stuff. And Alan and I have talked a lot about intuition. We did an episode on it that was one of our highest hitters, actually. From your perspective, what is it and how do you leverage it better? Fire question. I, I believe, I believe, is it a hard question? No, I said fire question. Oh, fire. Oh, okay. I was going to say, <laughs> well, you answer it now. Um, I, I think it's really comes down at the heart of it is trusting your gut. You know, you, I don't think there is intuition without self-trust. So, uh, you know, this is something I, I actually uh, can point back to like Malcolm Gladwell in this case. And, and one of the, I, I can't claim to be a huge reader. Um, but in those days and, you know, twenties and thirties, like blink came out. And at that time I was very over analytical and the book basically was around the premise that people who trust their gut to make decisions, make as good, if not better decisions than people who overanalyze things to make decisions. So it's like you're looking for that one data point, right, that you can extrapolate and, and, and base on. So for me in a relationship, it's does she feed me or does she drain me, right? That, that would be an example of, of not having to overanalyze your checklist. So <laughs> intu intuition um, is, is, in my view, the, the action of trusting your gut. So one thing I want to clarify too is I think, so I'll just give you my theory and then I would love your take on it, Matt. So, cause this has already been a very contemplative episode. I know that anyone listening is going to really leave this having some new things to think about. I know I will as well, which is one of the things we love to do. We love to shake the snow globe and whatever lands will be a more capable, well-developed person, either externally or intrinsically. So, or both. So I have this theory of you can trust your intuition and you should 
but it's predicated on a couple of things. Number one, I believe it's predicated on clarity of what you desire. It's clarity of core values and clarity of mission. But more importantly, when you're in fear or an unresourceful state or a depressed state, I honestly don't think you should trust your gut. I think that's when your gut is being masked by fear. Right. And right. So certainly you depression. You have to know when you're in yeah. fear versus when you're actually hearing that whisper of true intu intuition. And so Kevin and I often talk about the whisper and how hard it is to hear that whisper, especially when you're in fear. And I think that your fears and your worries might mask themselves as intuition. What's your take on that whole thing? Well, I mean, the, the prime point I'm hearing is, and I completely agree, is I don't think intuition and, and you know, your gut really works if, if you're being skewed by, uh, you know, being not anything but grounded, right? Which being in a state of fear is, is definitely that. Um, I, I, again, I come back to earn confidence and standing on your two feet and being, you know, I got whatever's coming my way because whether I have a choice or not, and even if I don't have the answer, I'll, you know, we're all survivors, right? We're going to figure that out. So, um, you're absolutely right. It's like, well, if I'm, if I'm in a state of fear, whatever that is, uh, then maybe it's okay to, it, you should be questioning your, you know, what you would consider in those situations to be my intuition. And that's maybe when, you know, Kevin, you give Alan a call and, uh, you know, you get a second opinion. That's usually how it works, Matt. Believe, believe it or not, that's how it goes. <laughs> but lately, and this is the thing, and this is why I love Alan's take on that. As I've grown more confident and more capable, I call him far less because now I, I feel like I have the answers and I've gone very far from scarce into abundant. So I do, I do believe that that's, it's, it's such an important right. concept to understand. So I want to go a little tactical right now because sure. we've, we've been diving all over the place. So from coaching people, and Alan and I working together, we've really locked in systems and how important a system in your life is. What is something in your system, maybe one thing, maybe three things, maybe five things, depending on what your system is, that you know you should be doing every day that you do consistently? Huh. So I, it's funny you say it, right? Because we talk about, the, you know, referencing the book and things like that. It's like, oh, okay, that's a, I don't know that I necessarily live my days is like I'm in a system mentality. Um, my life's pretty compartmentalized. You know, I'm, I'm like, I'm with my family, I'm working. I'm, do, you know, I'm like, I can only do one thing at a time. So it's hard to have a system when I know like what my limits are. Um, but when we're talking about personal development, I, I, I certainly, you know, the morning routine, which I, I don't think is a novel concept. Uh, but and, and, and the triggering that we're talking about around gratitude, I, I think the gratitude triggers are probably at the, the one thing I could say that I do systematize. So as soon as my feet hit the floor in the morning, like, okay, all right. Mm. Yeah, that's okay. I feel good about that. And then uh, it, it, it's also good to integrate it into things that you're already doing. And I know it sounds very, you know, you're tactical here, right? So while I'm brushing, oh, my, right? so while I'm brushing my teeth, what else do I have to do? Like, I can do that without thinking too hard. So uh, I can be intentional about the things that I'm, I'm thinking about either in the morning, what my day is looking like, or in the evening, how my day was. And, you know, uh, and that's why I have good, you know, nice teeth. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, I don't know why I said that. I'm looking at you guys like, all right, I just want to crack you up because like, I could see you both. Um, well, you worked. Strong yeah, work. thanks. Yeah, thanks. Um, I, 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 that's, that's about the best answer I have for you in the moment. Okay. So Alan, we got ten min or nine minutes. So I want to get into our last two questions. You can uh, you can lead the dance. Yeah. So the last two questions here. Well, you get one. I get one. So yes. last one question for you. Last one question. Yeah. Thank you for that clarity. I'm You're feeling a snow that. globe coming. <laughs> yeah. There's gonna be something. Yeah. There's gonna be something. So I want to mix it up. Uh, there is a question that I typically ask the guests, but I've been mixing it up lately. So for you, having written a book. And I was talking to Kevin not long ago. I'm like, I want to call my book personal development. <laughs> and it's like, that's not a good marketing. That's not like catchy. That's not a good hook. But honestly, I might, you know, I, I like might. it. <laughs> Thank you. I actually just say what it is. Right. right? Exactly. That's the rule of marketing. Just say what it is. <laughs> like, why it. make people guess? I like that. <laughs> the four hour it. personal development. No, I'm kidding. I'm sorry, Tim Ferriss, if you're listening. All right. So um, you 
have immersed yourself in personal development for a very long time. You've wanted to write this book for a very long time. And I really honed in on one question that you asked yourself is what will I regret? So I live by the top five regrets of the dying. Bronnie Ware, we've interviewed her. She wrote a book called the top five regrets of the dying. Highly recommend it to everybody all the time. Number one regret is I wish I had lived a life true to myself and not what others expected of me. My question is simple. Where were you not living a life true to yourself? Did you regret it? And what did you do about it? Three questions. Hmm. Alan. That's three hmm. questions. <laughs> yeah, I think that's three all in one. <laughs> um, I think that it would have been in that period of time when I was, um, in, I mentioned earlier in the interview when I was, I was now a single dad and I'd been a couple of years into having my marketing business and I just kind of hit a wall. I just hit a wall. I was, and I was, it's that swimming against the current feeling what it is that to me you're describing. It's like, and, and this is now back to intuition, right? And trusting your gut. It's like when you feel like you're banging your head against the wall or, um, you know, I, I think you guys would agree. We, we are all probably three willful individuals, right? So if you're applying your will and you're still not getting anywhere, that's when you have to just be like, okay, what does it mean to swim with the current? Because I'm not getting where I want to go here. And, and I was, was in the business where there just weren't enough hours in the day. Um, I was kicking and scrapping uh, because it was a professional services, but you're building by the hour, right? So half the time I'm with my son and, uh, and, and I just couldn't get that. That's why I, I, you know, ironically, but it's also why I decided to switch into the internship space and getting more entrepreneurial. So I wasn't being true to myself. I wasn't dating either in those early years. It was head. It was like this and that. So that's, I mean, I've never been asked this question. I hadn't really ever thought of it, but this is where my, you know, where my thoughts go is that very, that like year or two when I just probably pushed too hard to stay in what I was doing instead of taking more of a leap and things that were more fulfilling to me. And I, I could be more hopeful about um, that, lo that lack of that loss of hope is, is I think a key factor in the answer here. And, and then that it's okay for me to um, to do to do things for myself that I can't get a babysitter or you know I, I know that's probably not the phase of life that most people are at but yeah that's where it, that's where it was for me appreciate that, that was yeah. Really, yeah really all right so I'm gonna switch it up as well okay so I have two questions I, I you can I want you to answer whichever one resonates with you more I got a choice you got a choice oh, like, Alan didn't go, give me a choice that's right Alan, <laughs> Alan, Alan, he Alan, came right at me. Um, so two, two questions you choose. If you could only give somebody one thing to take away in order to help them begin the process of self-discovery, what would it be? That's number one. Number two, what is something that you're currently struggling with or going through? That's number two. Hmm. Can I answer both? You can answer both. All right. Cause the first one's a quick answer. I mean, you're asking, you know, what's the one thing is just don't, just don't permit yourself to be anything less than kind to yourself. Mm, I like that. I mean, it, that's where, that's at the foundation of it all. So when you're not being kind to yourself, just, you know, you gotta, you gotta shake off all the dysfunction and crap, whatever led to you being, being less than, than that and just start there and build on it. That's your first building block. So that's, that's number one. For me, I, I'd say like, <laughs> I kind of missed the cut. This is not question two. Um, I, I missed the cut a little bit on social media. Like I typed my papers in college. I, you know, when I was in marketing, there was no social media. Uh, so I'm in remedial right now with like the book and like the book at this point almost seems like the easy part to trying to figure out how to get it out there. It's a different kind of marketing. And so um, learning the social media platforms that I'm not as familiar with, especially I score introvert and um, I'm not really very comfortable. I'm very comfortable on zoom. I'm not comfortable standing in front of my iPhone and talking to like, you know, that invisible dot knowing that, you know what I mean? Like just, it's just a weird feeling and um, but I'm getting better at it. So it's, it's what I like about that part of the question is I know that I have my discomfort zones and, and I have to expand my, comfort zone or you know where how do you grow yeah so that's 
really one of the main areas. And then we talked about the idea that maybe I would, I'm kind of learning right now to start my own podcast, but I'm excited about that. That's not really where I'm struggling. I just have to learn. But the video thing and the subtitling, all the tech stuff, I'm not, I'm not really happy about that yet, well, I but, I'm, but I'm, I'm doing it. So Yeah, and I appreciate that. The reason I asked that question is because you're on here as the expert and I would hate for somebody to hear you and say like, oh, he's got it all, all figured out. Our goal is always to, to help people understand that like, and that's why we talked about earlier, we're always a work in progress. Always. Right. We're, we're always that work in progress. And right now you're working through that. Eventually it'll be how to hammer out five episodes a week and do the video and do the tech stuff. Right. It'll be second nature, right? It's just right. practice. Right. 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 Um, yeah. You know, to the point you just made and I'm, we have three minutes. So, you know, Alan, you got a chance to give me an optional question if you want. Um, I, I think it's really important to know what it is, you know, and know what it is that you think, you know, and when that's the case uh, to maybe ask for a second opinion and know what it is that you don't know. And, you know, and, and like, knowing your weaknesses, you know, and that you'll never get better at something either. Like, you know, I have no sense of direction, those kinds of things. Like, just know that about yourself. And it's, it's a really good, it's a really good border to, to live by so that you're not stepping out of bounds and getting yourself, you know, again, it's kind of a prevention thing, you know, in terms of messing up and, and also playing to your strengths. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm constantly looking for the next thing to grow uh, myself that never stops. Mm, self-awareness self-awareness so uh kev you normally do this but i'm just going to jump in so uh plug away we've got a couple minutes here so where can people find you where can they read your book z isms all the things thank you um well i'll be really quick about this too you know it's uh z isms is uh you know has the hyphen it's z isms you know in many other parts of the world so i have to be respectful still the same letter um dot com and there's sample of the book there, uh, the front end. And the only thing I'd ask people to do is just look at it, like read the first part of the, the free part of the book and you'll know if you want to keep reading. Um, you know, my goal is to positively impact as many people as possible. And, and that's the purpose of the book. Um, it's not a business card. I'm not running um, you know, individual coaching or anything like that right now. You know, the book is my, my step into the world of personal development, and I, and I wrote it to be read based on all the things we're talking about. So it's just important to me. Um, doing the podcast, I mean, people here are now listening, they might not buy the book, but we get to have this conversation, right, and just make the impact. So I'm really psyched to be here, and I, I really thank the listeners for, you know, going through with us just to give me the opportunity to talk about all these things, and I, I hope it's helpful. And um, I guess the last thing is over on Amazon, the reviews speak for themselves. I'm really proud of those and see what other people are saying and uh, decide for yourself. Well, we thank you for, for joining us. We have the best listeners in the world. And the fact that we get to have amazing guests like you on, that just makes this journey that much better. And again, it's three o'clock Eastern standard time. And we're lucky enough to, to chat for a living. Like it's, it's, that's what I'm grateful for. What are you grateful for Matt right now in this moment? Being here in this moment with you gents, honestly, Alan, I would say what we get to do on a daily basis. And also, I'll just say this. We got to sit here and learn from you this whole time. Right. That's what I'm most grateful for. Yeah. I got to be real. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's unreal that we get to learn for a living. It's beautiful. It's truly beautiful. beautiful. All right. Yeah, Anything in closing, guys. Matt? If you had a 10-second blip to leave the listeners with, what would, you, what would you give them? Just be kind to yourself. I like that. Fire. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. that was Matt Zinman. Talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.